What are your favorite examples of advanced technology from science fiction? The San Junipero service from Black Mirror, if I'm ever disabled, I want to be able to load my consciousness into a computer server and spend the rest of my natural life in virtual reality. Haven't seen this episode, but this seems to bring up the same issue as Star Trek teleporters. Wouldn't being uploaded into the server just duplicate your consciousness? So the you in your body wouldn't enjoy any of the benefits of the VR. It would just die. The you in the VR would enjoy these benefits. It would act like you, but it wouldn't really be the original you, but someone else with your memories and personality. Surprised not to see literally any of the multiple forms of FTL tech yet. Warp drive. Slipstream. Slip space. Wormhole tech. Stargates. Heck, I'd settle for a RAM scoop actually seems plausible that we might see something like it in a few generations. Reading Warhammer 40k, I always thought it was funny that as humanity is conquering their whole galaxy, so many astarts are basically carrying giant electric turkey carvers. A part of the justification for those is that astarts often have to fight chaos, and edged weapons work better against them than bolters and see because they have more cultural significance. Basically, they work because they're awesome. The Omnitrix. The fact that you can use this device with millions of alien samples and walk around in their shoes and use their unique trays is pretty cool. Plus you could become a superhero, or a super villain, whichever you choose lol. All good fun till you turn into something that can't survive in Earth's atmosphere and implodes from the pressure difference. Mine would have to be a particular in Isaac Asimov's Foundation series. Basically, it's a voice to text typewriter. The character misspeaks while dictating to the device and so she has to throw out the paper and start again. I love how the idea of a word processor just didn't come to him. It shows how there's so many innovations that couldn't be easily predicted. This sounds more like Asimov was expressing a wee bit of frustration at the technology that he was using as a writer. The lazy gun. It will destroy what you point it at in a unique and thematically appropriate way. One was fired on a city known for its financial institutions and millions of tons of molten precious metals were dropped on it. I want a Xu as a best friend. One of those massive mothships with a mind. Just hanging out. The idea that you can have a computer in your head that backs your brain up all the time, so that if you die, they can take the computer out of your head and put it into a new body. Stacks from altered carbon is pretty close to what you're talking about. Power armor exoskeletons are badass in terms of looks and abilities. Samus, Master Chief, Doomslayer, Iron Man, Fallout armor, there are so many examples. I personally dig the power suit Samus wears. It's versatile, can stack numerous powerful weapons to it, can become filled with unbridled power, light suit, dark suit, phasin suit, etc, and more. Plus it just looks cool lol. Having my own personal terminator, the oasis and all the full immersion bodysuits and all the gear, the hologram watch from the original total recall, lone stars rv from spaceballs, Mech's gundams, and I always wondered what that pizza tasted like from back to the future pt, 2 inches. Halfway there to the second one. Checking with Ms. Explorer. There is a man with a ship that can travel underwater that has been destroying man of war ships and then disappearing. The captain's names apparently is Captain Nemo. I want one of those submarine things. I hear that some governments have them for real but keep it all super secret. Big conspiracy, man. The Heisenberg Compensator from Star Trek. When Star Trek introduced the idea of teleporters to get around. Some fans complained that it could never work because of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, the law that it is impossible to know both the location and movement of a particle at the same time, which would make tearing something apart and putting it back together at the atomic level. So some writer invented the Heisenberg compensator to get around it and make sure it got mentioned in the script. When asked how that device worked, their response was very well. Thank you. I think those mech suits from Starship Troopers are pretty neat. I'm talking about the book, where they don't use rifles or other projectiles, but only use the mech suits armed with bombs and missiles, at least as far as infantry combat is concerned. Pandorum. 
They gave passengers drug substances to accelerate evolution to adapt to the planet they were heading to colonize. Unfortunately it didn't work too well for the people on the ship, especially when a madman took over. I like the slap drones from E&M, Banks player of games, probably, been a while since I read those books. It's set in a fantastically abundant far future society where murder is almost unheard of, but if someone does actually commit one then they get slap droned. An incredibly polite, highly intelligent machine with a variety of advanced non-lethal weaponry is literally going to follow you around everywhere for the rest of your life to make sure you don't do it again. The punishment aspect is that you no longer get invited to parties. Elegant. Saddens me to have has to scroll so far to find something from e &M. Banks, it'd be a neural lace, for me. I like the grain memory video recorder from Black Mirror that records everything you see and you can rewatch everything you've seen and heard and share it with others on the big screen too. I like the stuff that's super advanced but still has interesting limitations. Probably my favorite is Wellstone from the Queendom of Soul books by Will McCarthy. Programmable matter that can alter its chemical properties in every way but mass. It has the approximate density of styrofoam and shape. So if you built a house with walls made out of wellstone, you could change sections of those walls into wood, or glass, or steel, or all kinds of solid state machines. It's like a lot of the magic nanotech that seemed to came up a lot in books written in the early 2000s, but just grounded enough to read like almost sufficiently advanced technology rather than magic. Wellstone was a really nifty concept. Will McCarthy elaborated on the idea in his book Hacking Matter, which has an authorized online PDF version. Stasis Fields Barbellas, from PCOA, instantly frees time for something, also resulting in a frictionless utterly invulnerable shield around said objects. Perfect oh crap button for emergencies, and there are weaponized applications. Sort of a one way time travel, too. Great book, I'd forgotten all about bobbles. Just lock a trouble zone off for 50 years, frozen in time while the rest of society works out a solution. I loved in Fahrenheit 451 how they had these rooms with a TV screen covering the entire wall on all four sides and it was interactive. It's like a VR except you don't have to wear a stupid helmet. That book was written nearly 70 years ago and we still don't have a TV to take over the whole wall, let alone all four walls. I suppose a projector could do the trick, but it still doesn't work on all four walls and it would still be an interactive video footage. You need to see the making of Mandalorian. That is quite impressive. Mass relays from Mass Effect. I love how they give context and scale to the concept of intergalactic space travel while also play a major role in the story. Honestly, I just love the idea of engineering so advanced that you can build mega structures like ring worlds and Dyson spheres. Why search for a habitable planet when you can just build your own? If you've never heard of him, you should look up the science and futurism with Isaac A. Rather channel on the tube. He covers a lot of topics, but his mega engineering episodes very directly target this topic. The spaceship from Futurama. It doesn't actually go anywhere just moves the space around it. It's like a hamster in a multi-dimensional wheel. On a Harrington-style gravity manipulation, even without the warp travel and grav waves the implications for interplanetary travel are incredible. Honestly, I'm a little disappointed we don't have clear, floating computer screens yet, or holographic phones that project from your wrist. I want a Jarvis so badly, a true personal assistant that you can converse with and learns more and more about you as you age with it, maybe one day. The lucid dream sleep machine from Inception, would love to be able to plug into something for naps or at night and go right into a lucid dream without trying. Gravity wells, artificial gravity, it's so impossible to ever actually create but it's such a simple concept to imagine. When I got older I was mind blown by how totally imaginary it is. I really like the robots in the Warbots book series because it feels more realistic than most other sci-fi ideas. They may be rather basic compared to what else is mentioned on this thread, but their simplicity and plausibility appeals to me. 
the recycler and fabrication stations from 2017 Prey. Chuck anything into a recycler and then you instantly have a convenient cube shaped materials to then use in a super advanced 3D printer. Nanotechnology advanced enough to build the universal constructor base seen in so many sci-fi movies and games. Basically the ability to deconstruct and reconstruct literally anything, at the molecular or even atomic level, by feeding the bay enough resources, and yes, while the conception and execution had some grisly results, like deconstructing a living person into their base materials, hardly any of these saw the greatest applications available to something like this. Starting with, how about turning the entire smog of New York and London into diamonds? I love bladder and everything but the idea of joy from 2049 where there is a projector on rails that can give you an eye almost indistinguishable from that of a human is very interesting to me. The technology in Tenshi Muayo holy crap was it awesome and mostly wood based which is ecological too. Basically had pocket dimensions, lightsabers from their hands, ships that turned into animals and had emotions and had like computers that just was a screen in front of them and could close any time they want. They also had nanobots. The San Junipero servers from Black Mirror, PNE of the best, if not the best, episode in the series. I have this slight delusion that by the time it's me and my wife's time to pass, technology will have actually caught up to make this a reality, and we can will enjoy our time together in virtual foreverness. It's a pretty tough problem. There are several obstacles. First is sheer size. A human brain has 1011 neurons. Each neuron connects to 104 other neurons for a total of 1015 synaptic connections. That means if you wanted to keep a model of the entire human brain in RAM you need a minimum of a petabyte of storage. About a million gigabytes, however. Realistically you would probably need to represent the connections as block diagonal matrices so that you could compute propagation of activation through the network through matrix multiplication, just as we do for current gen artificial neural networks, and that would require several more orders of magnitude of storage. Surprisingly, this isn't as far off as you might think, if Muir's law continues to hold and the cost of storage halves every 2 years, we're really only talking about 40-50 years. Second problem is that we still don't really understand any biological neuron well enough to simulate them. We do know each individual biological neuron is much more complex in practice than abstractions we currently use in ants. This might as increase the storage requirement by another order of magnitude as many variables may be required to simulate a single biological neuron. We do know some things. We can cut a single neuron out of a squid and see how it responds to electrical signals. Researchers have also mapped the connectome, how neurons wire together via axons and synapses of entire animals, small nematodes worms, and parts of the brains of mammals. If our understanding of biological neurons was correct, we should be able to simulate the behavior of the systems. We should be able to build a virtual worm that crawls around and acts like its living model. No one has been able to do this successfully, so there must be fundamental things we still don't understand. For example, while we have some limited understanding of how signals propagate, we have no idea of biological neurons learn. They certainly don't use the backprop algorithm that ants do. Some researchers think it must be some form of reinforcement learning but something is missing. Our best reinforcement algorithms have to play literally millions of iterations before they can play a passable game of Pong. While human children pick it up in a handful of iterations. Last problem is scanning. Researchers work with squids and nematode worms because they actually have much larger individual neurons than humans do, making it possible to work with them under a microscope. But there's no obvious way to get a scan of a living human brain at anything like the required resolution. A CT scanner has a resolution where each voxel is a cube roughly 0.5 mm on each side. You need at least a 1000x that resolution to be able to resolve individual neurons and synapses. Some people have suggested destructive scanning might be easier but we have no idea how to do that either, or whether or not a destructive scan would even result in a workable image. And that's when the real problems start. Once you have scanned a brain and start simulating it, how long will it take to work out the bugs, to keep it sane and healthy? 
to simulate a virtual environment wired up to all its senses so that it doesn't feel like it's stuck in an inky void, not only is this likely to be very hard on a technical level, it isn't obvious how this research could even be carried out in an ethical way. These problems feel solvable on a time scale a century or two. Certainly these topics are attracting a great deal of interest from students and new discoveries are being made all the time. I personally think it is unlikely that whole brain emulation will become practical during our lifetime. Teleportation, whether we're talking Star Trek, Doctor Who, etc. Flying driving needs to become a leisure activity. I read a story in which teleportation was the standard transportation. A leading company that managed this was Teleport Transit. But some bean counter included a software function to ensure that the number of people going into the booths matched the number coming out. To prevent people from saving money by doubling up. Until a pregnant woman in labor tried to get to the hospital quickly. The software glitched. Counting the nearly born baby as a second and paid client. It would not let anyone leave transport space. But nobody dared shut down the system since all of those people might vanish. The problem was solved when a distracted person set a destination. It was blocked from entering the booth before the doors shut. Equalizing the payments. Shields body shields and ship shields from Dune. When I read about them in the book. Written in 1965 I knew exactly what they looked like because well. I had seen them in countless special effects. But Frank Herbert the author hadn't he just visualized and described them out of his own head. Must have been one of the first popular depictions of it. Also hunter seeker drones from the series. Once again. I could visualize this perfectly because the concept of a remote controlled flying drone is familiar to me both from sci-fi and now reality but not in 1965. I was curious about ship shields, so I did some light googling, and according to wikipedia, the concept of a force field goes back at least as far as early 20th century. The encyclopedia of science fiction suggests that the first use of the term in science fiction appears to happen in 1931. In Spasserhounds of IPC by E. Doc Smith, 1. An early precursor of what is now called Force Field may be found in William Hope Hodgson's The Nightland, 1912, where the last redoubt, the fortress of the remnants of a far future humanity, is kept safe by the air clog generated by the burning earth current. 2. 1. In Isaac Asimov's Foundation Universe, Personal shields have been developed by scientists specializing in the miniaturization of planet-based shields, as they are primarily used by Foundation traders. Most other inhabitants of the Galactic Empire do not know about this technology. In an unrelated short story breeds there are manned by Asimov. Scientists are working on a force field, energy so channeled as to create a wall of matter less inertia, capable of protecting the population in case of a nuclear war. The force field demonstrated in the end is a solid hemisphere, apparently completely opaque and reflective from both sides. Asimov explores the force field concept again in the short story not final. The way these ideas come about and develop is so interesting to me. Herbert's conception of it is way more interesting than the average yeah. There's a force field, you know what it is, but he was building on other authors work, as most people are. I really like the Holtzman shields from Dune. The way they affect the world just feels so realistic. They're designed to stop projectiles, but still needs to be permeable for air to get through, so it filters by speed. That means pretty much all projectile weapons are obsolete, with bladed weapons becoming the norm again. And there the fighting style is completely different to account for shields, where defensive moves are fast but attacking lunges need to be slow to pierce the shield. Slap Drones from the Culture series. It's a post-scarcity techno-anarchy organized by massive eye minds. They don't do barbaric things like put people in prison for committing crimes. They're not really into punishment at all. Or rather, they're into ironic kinda Taoist poetic punishment implemented by snarky robots. If you go around hurting people, they send a drone to follow you around and mess with you, warn people, block your attacks, and generally interfere with you continuing to do that. If absolutely necessary, it's allowed to knock you out so whoever you are about to do bad stuff to can get away. Anyone else remember MT Transporters? MT. I can't remember the book, but basically they were large grey cubes that folded space-time, and you walked into one side, and walked out of another MT cube. 
You literally took one step on this planet, and then stepped onto another one. I never like teleportation because I think, once you break down all my molecules and send them across space, then that me died. A perfect copy might have come out the other side, but the me that was really me, is dead now, and this new guy is just a perfect copy. Otherwise, there wouldn't be issues with being trapped in a pattern, or delays causing multiple me's to arrive on the teleport platform. If that happens, it means I'm, me, myself, and my soul if I have one, died when they said energize and copied my atoms to a new place, but an empty cube folds space and time, meaning walking through it from here to wherever, is more like a stargate, than a transporter, you're still you and no one had to deconstruct you on a molecular level, if there's one problem I have with the Star Trek universe, it's the transporter. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. Bye for now.